Good morrow, jadies and gentlemen. Allow me to set the scene for you. The year is 2008. You and your brother have just gotten permission to use the family desktop that sounds like a high-powered jet engine whenever you turn it on. Your brother is older than you, which automatically makes him cool in your book. Recently, when he's been able to stand hanging out with you, he's been telling you about this new show that him and his friends are watching called Naruto. It belongs to a genre called anime, and even though it looks like some of the cartoons that you watch on TV, he insists that it isn't the same and that anime is for older kids. Obviously, that also makes it cool in your book. With your one hour allotted computer time today, you guys are looking for videos on YouTube called AMVs. Your brother tells you that anime is super hard to find and that this is the best way to be able to watch it for free. Suddenly, you come across the video that has a girl with pink hair in the thumbnail. You think that she is super pretty, so you beg him to click on that one. Reluctantly, he does, and you are met with the best cinematic masterpiece that your small brain has ever seen at this point in time. You have now unknowingly entered the weird and wonderful world of Vocaloid and Nightcore. Hello all, my name is Wet Blanket, and I used to listen to a lot of these two genres of music. Well, actually, who am I kidding? I still do. There's just something about pitching popular songs slightly higher or using a computer program to make robotic voices sing original music that just sets my soul on fire. I got into these two genres back in the early 2000s. Since me and my brother weren't really allowed to go on YouTube and only did it when we knew our parents weren't watching. Sorry if you're seeing this, guys, but I'm a big kid now, so you can't ground me anymore. And also because we really didn't have things like Spotify or headphones or even phone data to stream music on the go, I got most of my fix through Flipnote. Yes, teenagers that are still better animators than I will ever hope to be were unknowingly feeding my addiction by pushing their DSi up to their computer to record 15 seconds of their favorite tune and animating them to whatever furry OC or Sonic character they were hyperfixating over the time. I would then load all of these videos onto my SD card and listen to the same 15 to 30 seconds of all of these songs wherever I would go to feed my maladaptive daydreaming habit. Ah, those were the days. Much simpler times. For Nightcore, there wasn't really a fan base as much as there were old classics. I can still belt out every single word of Angel of Darkness as if it were my own family crest, and the best thing that Nickelodeon has ever done for this community has been releasing the victorious song, Take a Hint. You could tell these videos were Nightcore at the time, not only because the word would be in the title, probably in some kind of cool edgy font, but because there would be an anime something in the thumbnail. Usually this anime something had nothing to do with the song being played, but it's just kind of the thing that you did. Today, Nightcore songs are called sped up TikTok versions. However, those that were there when the deep magic was written knows what they really are. Personally, when I was younger, my favorite Nightcore songs were Angel with a Shotgun, How to Be a Heartbreaker, Monster by Megan Daya, and Pika Girl. Nah, but seriously, how did none of us see that that song was like low-key about bestiality? These days, though charming, I definitely see how arguably low effort these videos were. I mean, they were only downloading an mp3 of the song, pitching it up, and then uploading it to the YouTube- to the- to the YouTube- holy shit, I sound like a millennial- and then uploading it to YouTube with an anime thumbnail. However, I will say that the AMV videos were still pretty good for the time. Like, I know that these days 11-year-olds on CapCut are making better edits than these people ever could, but you have to realize that this is the early early 2000s. Downloading an mp4 file was a process that usually didn't even work, and when it did, it also gave you a ton of trojans on your computer. Speaking of impressive, I now want to talk a little bit about Vocaloid. Vocaloid and Nightcore aren't the same thing, but they kind of run in the same circles. Vocaloid is essentially a program where you have different voices sing original music. I'm pretty sure it's a Japanese program, but I, I don't really know. I'm not very well versed on how any of this works. I just now learned how to use Procreate on my iPad. So I'm finally not giving everybody that watches my videos vertigo by zooming in and zooming out. So it's definitely baby steps for me. I, I mean, like, I'm just kind of like saying what I think that it is. <laughs> Obviously, one Google search is a little difficult for grandma over here. 
Anyway, I just recently learned that this form of music does have a bit of a fan base based around the different voices that a music creator can use depending on the sound that they want in their song. Obviously, the biggest name in Vocaloid is Hatsune Miku, but there are all different characters with different personalities that the fandom has made for this program. To be clear, I think the fans made the personalities, but the program made the physical characters, if that makes sense. I'm gonna get like 27 comments telling me I'm wrong. I'm honestly just ready for it at this point. <laughs> Anyway, back in the day, I had no idea about these different characters because I didn't even know what an anime was, so I kind of just assumed that all these characters came from their own respective anime, but looking back at some of my favorite songs and seeing that the different characters even existed back then just kind of adds a cool new layer onto it for me and I'm still kind of discovering new things about this medium that I've enjoyed for years. Funnily enough, I also found that I naturally gravitated towards a couple of voices and I didn't even notice it. That being said, my favorite Vocaloid back in the day and today has always been the two twins, Rin and Len. I don't know, I guess they just always made bangers to, to my ears. My personal favorites have always been the Riddle Solver that can't solve riddles and Tokyo Teddy Bear, the latter of which I actually have a tattoo inspired by. My favorite thing about Vocaloid is that it really is a program designed for the fans. Sure, I'm certain that the actual company created the characters, but it's always been up to the fans to keep them alive in a way. These digital characters are pop stars in the real world. The one thing that I didn't know when I was younger is that each of these characters actually has concerts where holograms of them perform for crowds and crowds of people. And the songs they sing are created by people like you and me. I love the fact that the creators of Vocaloid and other companies hold competitions for up-and-coming songwriters through mediums like the Hatsune Miku Expo. One of my recent favorite Vocaloid songs is actually the 2018 runner-up from the Miku Expo competition. It's a song called Bye Bye School, and it's actually sung in Spanish. I just love how anybody can make these programs their own and they're not limited by things like language or any other barriers like that. The Vocaloid community is very diverse in a way that it can enjoy songs in any language from anybody. There isn't any one set language option or setting, and honestly, it's really customizable. I can personally resonate with that even now because I enjoy a lot of songs in a lot of languages that I don't know, both because I'm a classically trained performer and also because I love Vocaloid. By the way, if you'd like to see a video of the similarities between Vocaloid and Opera, please comment below because that is something that I would definitely like to make in the future. There are a lot more similarities than you might think. I suppose you could say that in a way, Hatsune Miku got me ready for college. So thanks, Miku. This medium has also changed and evolved so much because it is so customizable and for the fans. I mean, like I said, these days Vocaloid characters are collabing with actual living pop stars and selling out arenas. And that is a long way to go from things like this. And don't think I'm judging this. This was one of my favorite videos from when I was like 10 years old. Since the medium is so unlimited, there's pretty much a Vocaloid song for every genre. You've got happy songs, sad songs, scary songs, rap songs, disturbing songs about puberty, and even country music. <laughs> No, but seriously, the one thing I can say about these two genres of music is that they allowed a space for people not to only express themselves, but create things in a whole new way. Nightcore allowed people in the early 2000s to create homages to some of their favorite shows and put out some bangers while they were at it. And as we've discussed, Vocaloid was an avenue for all sorts of things. I'm talking animation, video games, breaking of language barriers, and even sold out arenas for pop stars that aren't even real people. I mean, I don't know about you, but I would love to go to a hologram concert one of these days. That just sounds so dope. Anyway, yeah, looking back at Vocaloid or Nightcore leaves me nothing but positive nostalgia, and I'm happy that both communities seem to be thriving in their own ways, and Vocaloid even seems to be coming into the mainstream a lot more than it used to be. Overall, I give the Vocaloid and Nightcore communities 10 leaks out of 10.